Now, isn't this a thing of beauty? As you can see, everything's come up really, really well. Um, for something that's over 40 years old, what is it? Phew. Yeah, 41, 42 years old, uh, having its first cleanup, I have to say I'm pretty happy. Uh, now, I haven't actually used the caustic. I forgot that I actually, um, I ran out of caustic, oh, quite a while ago now, and um, I'm now just using a mild detergent in the ultrasonic, but the heat and the ultrasonic combined are more than enough. Uh, most of the time. Any tough spots, you can hit it with the um, old brake cleaner. All the housings have come up really, really nicely. Uh, I'm really, really happy overall with everything. The AVs look almost like brand new. The body uh, looks fantastic. I have flattened the faces off on uh, most of these pieces. The thing is, if you start taking too much meat off them, you're just going to weaken it. So uh, there was a fairly healthy woof in this little spot here with the gap that's left there or the, the little depression that is left there i can barely feel it i'm more than happy more than satisfied with uh, the flatness of it looking at our illustrious choke cover uh the choke cover and choke housing uh as you may recall uh had had a pretty hard life the corrosion on this housing was uh pretty bad so as you can see i've just used uh some devcon to uh seal it and hold it in place that's not going to go anywhere Okay, so under the carburetor kit, uh, I've got this one open and laid out with all the bits and pieces that I'm going to use. Comes with uh, our intermediate gasket, which goes between the body and the base. This is your normal base gasket uh, that goes underneath the carburetor between that and the manifold. Uh, this one goes on top of the, the lid uh, where the air filter sits down. Um, a lot of people don't <laughs> a lot of people don't worry about that but it is actually quite important because it is the first point of entry uh into the engine and if you do uh go through dusty environments uh you are going to get a fair bit of dust in through that little gap there so don't leave that one out uh this is the one for the choke cover uh these are the two gaskets for the uh accelerator pump housing the gasket and the diaphragm for the uh power valve it's our accelerator pump diaphragm there it's so the choke pull-off diaphragm. I'll explain that one when I'm assembling the lid. Uh, we've got an assortment of O-rings and whatnot over here. Needle and seat, obviously. Uh, they also come with an exploded view uh, and a how-to for the needle and seat. But point of interest, lid gaskets. There are so many different variations of the same carburetor uh, that get distributed throughout the world. Uh, these manufacturers cannot, cannot tool up for every single one of them. So what we've got here is the original lid gasket that you probably saw me take off uh, in the uh, tear down. Now it's a rubber gasket. If I was really in a pinch, I could probably reuse that. It's still reasonably pliable. Um, it's still pretty flexible. I prefer not to because there are some spots here that you know are exposed to the air and the heat and they do start to um, to break down a bit. So if I really was stuck and could not get the original uh, the proper gasket for it, I'd use that. This one here, quite simply, is just wrong, wrong, wrong. There are some parts that line up, but it's pretty plain to see that uh, it's just not the one. So that one can go to one side. And this is the one we're going to use here. Now, on initial uh, glance, on first glance, you're going to say, hey man, that one's not right either. However, like I said, it's designed to suit a few different models. So while it might not be exactly the same as that, there's nothing on this gasket that is going to cause the carburetor to perform poorly or incorrectly. So every hole that is in this gasket here is in this one here as well. So you can see there's two holes down the back here, only one down here. But if we grab the body, you can see that even though there is that hole there in the gasket, when it's on there, it's not going to go anywhere. Uh, same with this one here. You can see there's just aluminium directly underneath that. Uh, every other hole, every other orifice that needs to be there is there. Any other hole that's uh, that's not meant to be used is uh, is going to be blocked up and sealed. So that's going to be what we use for our reassembly. So we're going to start off with the base. I normally start at the bottom, work my way up to the top, uh, assemble as we go, and uh, then add all the uh, ancillary equipment onto the outside. Uh, the secondary uh, throttle disc stop is still in the factory position. Um, I've had a good look at that and you hold them up to the light and make sure there's no uh, gigantic gap. As I said, the uh, throttle shafts in this are still uh, perfect. 
Uh, so there's no reason any of that should have moved and uh, there's no reason that anything uh, needs to be adjusted there. Secondary return spring is poking upwards. It just needs to sit upwards like that. And then later on when we put the body on, you'll see that that hooks onto it. We have our fast idle adjustment screw here. Uh, we'll get into the adjustment of that a little bit later on. Uh, but for now, the only thing we need to do here is to take our idle mixture screw. You can put a little bit of goop on them if you want to, just to smooth the assembly. It's important when you put these screws in that you make sure that that spring applies pressure for detent uh, for a decent amount of, uh, of travel. Now that's that's bottomed out there. By rights we shouldn't need to come out any more than four whole turns. So if I come out one, two, three, four, there's still plenty of tension on that screw so it's not going to wander or fall out. Uh, normally we come out about two and a half turns, that's a good starting point. So I'll set that now. So we come one, two and a half. And that's our base ready for the body to go on. So we have our intermediate gasket here. Quite straightforward, sits like so. Grab our body, put it there. That can go on like that. Now the base screws are most easily, or normally most easily identified by the condition of, the, uh, of their heads. And of course they're going to be the same length. So you get two screws like that that are a bit shiny. Pretty safe bet that they are going to be your base screws. Make sure everything's lined up, of course. And just give them a nice nip down. Now you've got to remember, this is just aluminium, so it will strip easily. So, yeah, just uh, exercise caution. And that's it. It's already starting to look like a carburetor. So we've got our idle mixture screw in there, our base attached to the body, and we're ready for the next phase. base idle screw you may remember when I took that out I said I was going to give the spring a bit of a tweak if they've been wound in too far these springs can end up shorter than they need to be fixing that is merely a case of grabbing a pair of side cutters or so and just giving it a bit of a, a squeeze in between the coils like that and that just helps to spread that screw uh, that spring out a little bit just so that it gives a little bit more pressure uh, in its normal position. Again, you can put a little bit of droop on that just to help it go in a bit smoother. Goes in like so. And get our Excel, our throttle shaft back to its home position. We'll see him start to come out the other side there. So what we want to do is for a base idle setting on one of these. You can just sit there and watch the, as I turn that in. You may or may not be able to see the throttle disc just starting out to open. Normally with one of these, good starting point is again about two and a half turns. So if we go one, two and a half, that'll probably be a pretty good starting point. Now, the accelerator pump. So we have one gasket that goes on like so. And we have our little housing that goes on there. Our spring, that you may recall from disassembly. Diaphragm goes on the top. Pull that over the top, making sure the spring doesn't fling out. Keep everything lined up. Grab our long screws. Four of them. Actually, the second longest screws. And the ones on the power valve are longer because they've got bigger housings to go through. Cinch them down so it's all sitting nice and flat. We haven't pinched the rubber anywhere. 
again just nipping them up gently don't strip them because if you strip these it means helicoils alrighty so we're onto the power valve assembly now uh, it's really not a heck of a lot to it uh, so we've got this little block here which is actually the valve body I suppose you'd call it and this uh, little brass and I suppose you call it a bolt but it does have the seal on it that is the actual uh, valve itself so it goes through the hole like such and then um, it moves oh, bugger all really like it, it only just creeps open and closed um, whenever the spring overcomes the manifold vacuum uh, that's put onto the diaphragm so I'll, uh, I'll start to put that together for you now so you can understand how it works so we've got our, our valve in the valve body this little fibre washer that goes onto there then we have one of our uh, little brass washers there a diaphragm goes on there making sure that you line that up with the hole that's actually the vacuum orifice uh, then we have another brass washer that goes on there and we just put our nut on and nip that up I'm going to be a heathen here and just use multi little baby multi grips on the front and it doesn't need to be super tight nips up like so so that in a sense uh, is the valve itself you can see I don't know if you can see how much that actually moves there but it's it's bugger all so that parts assembled the cover goes on the back of it after the spring goes in place the spring goes on like so and then we have our gasket goes on like that making sure to line up the orifice with the orifice in the body the whole thing goes on like that we grab our three longer screws third screw in place so now we know everything's in position we can run those screws down okay so we can now put our AVs back in uh, remember from disassembly uh, tear down shorter fatter one is our primary goes in like so you just give it a gentle tap into place like that secondary one goes in like so again just a General tap in, they'll just go home. They're not going to come out. Main jets can go back in now. I think it was a 107 and a half in the primary. So just over one millimeter. And just nips up. You can probably see a little bit of staining down in the bowl here. Uh, it's not actually scale, it's just, it, it's just staining in the bowl. Uh, there's no crap on there that's going to come loose and float around or anything. I'm quite satisfied that it's clean enough. We'll put our secondary jet in. And again, they just get nipped up. They, they, they go in pretty positively, so you'll, you'll know when they're home. So our accelerator pump check valve has to go back in. And you may recall all this one is is just a ball bearing, which goes into that little spot there and a brass weight that goes in and sits on top of it don't stick it in that hole because that hole doesn't go anywhere so we can put the body to the to one side for now um, i'm going to start work on the lid the uh, choke pull off assembly uh, choke pull off di uh, assembly diaphragm or cpa diaphragm needs to go in now a bit of a description uh, as what this does so this is uh, essential to your choke working uh, well when it's cold so what this does is when your vehicle starts up uh, when it's absolutely freezing cold and the choke is set completely closed like that this gets manifold vacuum put to it so 
when the engine actually starts, it gets manifold vacuum uh, put onto this side of it and it will actually pull the choke valve open a little bit. Get our lid for that one and our spring for that one. Again, pretty straightforward. You can't really get too much wrong. A little spring stayed in there through the ultrasonic, so that's a good thing. It's only a very light spring in here. We get our three shorty screws to hold that one in place. Spin them down like so. So, when we start the car cold, you jump in, give the accelerator one hit before you hit the key. Your choke will set with the spring that goes on there, like so. So now the choke is now 100% set. When the engine starts, even though the choke is set and it's up on a fast idle, manifold vacuum will start to come through and it will overcome to a point where it can pull that choke valve off so the engine doesn't over choke. If it over chokes and that diaphragm isn't working, uh, you're going to see it puffing out tons and tons of black smoke and it'll be running like a pig and uh, yeah, you'll, you'll know all about it. So um, once that's done, that diaphragm's going to pull down and actuate that and just pull the choke off enough so that hopefully it finds that happy medium. But that's a CPA diaphragm and what it does. So important little thing. Stick our needle and seat in now. Whether you like the silver washer or the copper washer, it's entirely up to you. Um, the copper is normally a little bit softer. And you can sometimes get a, little, a slightly better clamp. So we'll just drive that in there. It's nipped up with our 10 mil. Like so. Needle goes in. A little retaining spring goes on. And so now our needle won't fall out. Comes down as far as it needs to go, but she's not going to fall out. Once that's done, we can put our float in. So uh, it doesn't have a hook on it. It just has a, a contact point there, so it doesn't actually hook onto the, the needle, as is the case in some uh, carburetors. Our pin just goes in place like so. That, as that is there, is, um, is going to be just fine. Now some things that are important to check during assembly um, are things like your accelerator pump. It's normally not an issue but occasionally um, you can go to all the trouble of putting these things together and then you find that for whatever reason you've got a blockage somewhere. Accelerator pumps are famous for doing that. It's only a very very small little orifice there. If it's had some shit in the bowl which uh, this one has had chances are it's probably worked its way through there. So we'll give that a check. Now all I normally do for that is grab some CRC or WD-40 or uh, whatever you name your poison. And I'll just mate the nozzle up with that and see if we can get it to go through. <laughs> and here we go. So as you can see this one here she no good. Uh, what we have to do here is I'll grab a tiny little baby uh, jet drill and run it through there. So I'll just get that out now. If I can try and show you this. You can see the crap that's coming out of there. She's blocked good and good and proper. As if that is not enough, he puts the hand deeper. There we go, we're out the other side. And there's not even any brass on it, but it is absolutely filthy give that a give a clean out and we'll squirt through here and now we have fluid coming through our accelerator pump so the next thing we do from there we put a bit of this in the bowl to where the pump picks up from and if we work the accelerator a little bit You'll see that it's starting to take that fluid in there. It's now coming out through there. A bit more in there. If I cover up our, our pump 
check valve and that little passage that comes from the check valve to the discharge will have a working accelerator pump. And there she goes. It's a boy! Beautiful. Lid gasket. Get more of a wipe. Lid gasket. So as I was saying before, this lid gasket, although it's not exactly the same as the original one, it is perfectly suitable for the job. So I'm going to get my springs and linkages all in place because a lot of the time once these lids are on you can't get these things in the right place anymore. Uh, this might not be quite as bad this model but it's just a good habit to be in. Take that, our float level is set and we're just going to gently lower our lid into place and our gasket's nicely lined up Grab a screw to start with. Again, a shiny one is always the one that is uh, not exposed to the elements. So that one will go into there. And again, we're just going to make a start on that till it um, till it seats. Then we'll slowly go around and add the rest of the screws. Not forgetting that we do have a bracket and an idle solenoid earth wire that have to go into place. You may remember this one, big long screw with our uh, hose clip on it. So there's a bunch of vacuum hoses that'll go through that. It belongs on the front corner there. Can't go anywhere else. So we'll screw down, nip up. And that one there will leave until we're ready to put the idle solenoid on. But here we are, one step closer to it looking like a carburetor. Idle jets. Idle jets go back in, go right back where it came from. Uh, so, o ring, new o rings go on them. In, gently seated. Nothing more to them than that. Making sure you get the right one on the right side. We got a 55 and a 60, obviously, the 55 going into the primary side the 60 going into the secondary side. Now you may remember these bypass screws. Uh, this one here with the blunt tip and the spring goes in the top hole. We wind him home. Obviously uh, new o-rings go onto them. There's some suitable sized o-rings that come in the kit. Bottom it out and we come out one half a turn, two half a turn, three half turns. And that's the setting for that one. Last one here, another little bypass screw, all the way until it gently bottoms out. We come out one full turn, two full turns, three full turns, and a half. It's a good starting point for those, spring, uh, for those screws. So now comes time to check our idle solenoid. Now I have actually checked this before but I just thought I'd uh, go through the motions with you. These things are the cause of a lot of grief for a lot of people and I don't think a lot of people know what they do and why it causes an issue. So the idea with this is that it gets connected to your uh, ignition uh, 12 volt supply. So whenever the key gets turned on to on uh, for your engine to run, uh, this gets 12 volts applied to it. And when it gets 12 volts applied to it, there's a little coil in there and it retracts like that and uh, what that does is down and through there if you have a look this is all in line with the idle circuit so that's our idle mixture screw there discharged through the bottom there so that's what that little orifice there is what the vehicle basically runs on at idle is the fuel that's allowed through there this is basically a valve uh, that opens and closes that circuit so when you uh, switch the engine off your 12 volt disappears she goes in and uh, closes that circuit off and that is to uh, stop your engine from running on idle solenoid needs to work 
Uh, so a lot of the time you'll find these things where uh, they'll test them and oh, okay it's not working anymore they'll just cut the end off these uh, off the off the solenoid here so the idle circuit is uh, always running new o-ring on there it's placed into its into its home a little short screw that goes into there screws down snug and we have our ground wire for said idle solenoid using the screw with the flat washer on it only one of those screws in the carburetor and that's how you can tell if someone that didn't really know what they were doing has had it apart because that screw nine times out of ten will not be in the right place but that is the screw cinch them down we'll just go over the rest of the lid screws because our lid is now on for good uh, fast idle cam Oh, sorry, fast idle connect, uh, link needs to be done back up again. It's a simple case of just poking that back through where it came from. Put that in there. Fortunately, I kept my little spring clip and that needs to go back on here. So it just pokes through enough for a little clip to get on. Stink! And that's there. So now we essentially have a functioning choke. If this engine were up and running and, can, and, uh, and the choke was completely assembled, we'd be at base idle there. If the engine was cold, our choke coil would pull the choke on like that. And when we get in and give it a tap with the accelerator, that little cam comes around and starts and puts our accelerator linkage onto the fast idle cam up the top. And then when our uh, engine does start, that will actually stay where it is. The accelerator will stay on that fast idle cam. But when the engine starts, our CPA diaphragm, our choke pull-off assembly diaphragm, will pull the choke flap back, because it operates independently, or semi-independently. That'll come down like that, and that will pull the choke valve, or the choke flap back enough so that we can have a, a suitably uh, mixtured fast idle. Uh, now, so it, basically we've got a, a little Bakelite spacer here. Um, this doesn't require a gasket between it. Well, this is basically the gasket between the carburetor and the choke housing. But we do have a gasket in between the, uh, the choke coil and the uh, water, water housing. This little bit here is actually the hook for the secondary return spring, so that's why that sort of hangs out there. What we have to do here is line our, our coil up with the tang here on the choke, so it's important this all goes back in at the right angle. It can be a bit fiddly because everything wants to fall over. So we've got those two to mate up. Put some screws in there to start. Once we know that's not going to go anywhere, then we can adjust it and get it all set. Number three screw here. I'm going to put that secondary return spring on. So, it's this little one here. It just hooks up and over like that. So now, when our secondary is open, that spring will pull them closed. So that's working just as it should. Okay, so the final adjustment for the choke on this is uh, pretty straightforward. There's really not much to it at all, um, compared to some of the later model Makuni Solexes on your Magnas and things like that. Um, if you can just make out, there's a tiny little dot uh, in the in the outer of that housing there. The standard is just to line that up with the center one of these uh, increments along here. So the center one is just your standard and then if you need it to be richer you can go one or two increments uh, towards the richer direction or you can back it off and make it a little bit leaner. So if, I'm, if I adjust that, I'll just back it off again and show you. And if, I was to back, if I'm to back that off, you can see that it released the tension on the choke flap 
obviously it's going to wind around a fair bit past where it closes because uh, it's pretty cool here it's about 17 degrees so uh, that is is doing exactly what it should uh, when this gets down to the Antarctic in uh, Tasmania uh, it'll be there'll be a, a fair bit more spring tension on there because that's a bimetallic coil so the colder it gets the more it will rotate and then as it warms up it'll unwind and bring the choke flap off like that so that relies on the hot water coming through there so without that being connected up automatic choke is never going to work now the fast idle uh, I'm not going to touch it because I think I've, I've looked at it and I think it's actually pretty good uh, when I move this throttle you can probably hear those clicks now those clicks are the fast, fast idle cam that this is connected up to inside the housing that we saw before and judging by the position of this it looks like it's pretty right um, I'm not going to go on and adjust it too much from you know from experience looking at the position of that screw uh, it looks where I'm looks like it's exactly where I'm used to seeing them uh, some of the later model uh, carburetors actually have um, calibration marks on them uh, that you have to line up and with the wax pedal assembly uh, this doesn't have that, it's purely just a, um, a suck it and see sort of thing. So um, I'll put that, I'll just leave that where it is. Um, if Dan has any issues with it, uh, he can give me a call and I can talk him through adjusting it. But I'm pretty confident that that's going to be fine. Accelerator return spring. Nothing much to this really. You don't muck around with the accelerator return spring. And we have pretty much a functioning carburetor. The only thing that's missing, and I'm waiting to turn up, is a new one of these. Alrighty, so the piece de resistance, the crown and glory for this little thing here in front of us, uh, finally turned up uh, the other day, so I'm ready to put it on, is the secondary diaphragm. So not much to this, uh, the hose that I showed you, that's where the hole's at. I put that one on there like that this one in there like that that goes through there there's a little dimple on there that makes sure it locates in the right direction spring washer nut and she goes nip her up with your 12 millimeter spanner ah, just like that little plastic clip on the bottom here this needs to be pressed onto that shaft. She'll just go down gently. She's locked on there. That's not going to go anywhere. And now, you can probably hear that. That's actually the air running, it rushing in and out of the uh, secondary diaphragm, which means that yes, that vacuum circuit is working. And we are complete and ready to ship our carburetor. So finishing up, the long and the short of it is that we now have a carburetor that should be in just as good, if not better condition than when it was originally manufactured. Um, everything's been flattened off. Uh, everything should be sealed nicely now. We've got all our settings of our various adjustment screws as close as we can realistically get them to um, without having uh, the car here to be able to start it and run it and, and do all the finer adjustments. Most of the settings I've done here, I'm pretty confident that this thing here will... Um, We'll go on and start straight away. This housing here, I'm confident, isn't going to leak. Uh, the fitting on the bottom here, I'm happy with that. It's uh, It's been done properly. Pretty much the only thing they're going to have to do with this one now is uh, there is a piece of uh, heater hose that just needs to go between these two fittings here. Obviously, you've got your hot water that comes uh, through the inlet manifold and goes through the choke housing, gets circulated through the choke housing to uh, bring everything up to temperature and bring the bring the choke off so that is one completed carburetor i think you've got to agree that it looks substantially better than when it came in air cleaner stud we'll go in there i'm going to leave this one out just because it'll fit in the box a bit easier and it'll ship a bit easier uh, that is the original uh, air cleaner gasket so that can sit on there they gave you your paper one here but that's just in case you lose that one base gasket all the necessary holes and whatnot there Stick that on the top, send that one there, you can have that one for free Dan, I'll chuck that in just to sweeten the deal. 
thanks very much for watching everyone i hope you learned something from this this being my first or yeah, second installment of the first uh project here on youtube if you want to see more of the stuff that i'm putting together please uh like subscribe let me know if you've got any thoughts suggestions questions comments additions uh down below in the uh appropriate area and look forward to seeing you back here soon cheers